now you should be familiar with some methods of partial integration and somewhat know you know double integral and how we use it to find volumes. Let's just go through two very simple examples which you know shouldn't take too much of your time. First one, let's evaluate the double integral that's given by this. Okay, now um, to get used to facing these double integrals, how we normally uh, give a statement, okay, is like we write the double integral, however, we still need to specify r. Okay, remember r is the area r okay on the x and y plate. Now obviously we change r, we change the, the solid. See, um let me just give a, a quick example, okay. I mean I I'm not be giving too much of these examples, but I just want to be clear, absolutely clear what's going on, okay z is equal to the function of x and y, right? Now, this surface does not change at all. It does not change at all, okay? z is, is always there, okay? And this function is not going to change. So, the surface does not change. However, the solid, okay, as we know, is going to be bounded by the x and y uh, plane, right? And, the, you know, it's going to be bounded by the x and y plane and the surface. But, what we can change is that we can change this area r, okay? I hope you can see that. So if this area R, let's just say is this uh, oval shaped ellipsis like this, okay, the, the solid is going to be something like that, right? Okay, but you know, we can also change R, let's just say R is just something bigger, so R is something like that, okay? And then now the volume of the, the solid changes, it becomes a, a bigger solid, okay? So basically, you know, if you want to be more precise, it's the, the solid is bounded by the, the curve or the surface, Z is equal to the function of X and Y and the area R, okay? Knowing that area R, if we change it, we change the, the volume, okay? Yeah, so basically just, just that, there's always something here. Now, the reason why I say that, because you might be confused, you know, in one variable calculus, or sorry, yeah, one variable calculus, you know, we can immediately just evaluate this thing over here, you know, we don't need to define anything else. But when we face the double integral, we need to define the area R, because the area R is of vital importance, just like this one over here. So, what I, what I want to say is that, um, loosely speaking, or essentially, if we don't have the R over here, okay, this, this thing, oh sorry, if we don't have this statement over here, okay, this thing is, this double integral is quite meaningless because we don't know what R is, okay, and we certainly cannot evaluate what that double integral is, okay, but when you see double integrals, we're always going to have the double integral of, you know, the function, in this case is y squared times x, over the rectangle R, okay, and R is given by this thing over here. Now, as you can see by now, okay, when we define it x, you know, it's between minus 3 to 2 and y is between 0 to 1, we can now evaluate it and we can also use the theorem, the theorem that I showed in the last lesson, right? So this double integral. Now, I don't need to really know what the surface is, okay? Uh, certainly, I can't grab that. I don't know. Well, maybe I know, but I can't grab that. But I, it's still enough. It's still sufficient information for me to translate the double integral into the iterated or repeated integral and then do the calculation. So uh, remember the theorem that I have? Now, I would want to integrate with respect to y first, okay? Let's just say that we're integrate with respect to y. So remember, so what's the limits outside for the first integral? Or the first integral sign? Well, it's going to be the limits of x. Okay, I hope you can see that. Because after I write this, I'm going to write the integral that's inside. And since I wanted to integrate with respect to y first, then the limits go over here like this. Now, the function stays the same. Okay, and I'm going to put dy. Okay, and then I'm going to input dx. Okay, I hope you can see that. So I'm just moving from the double integral into the iterated integral for me to perform the necessary calculations. Now I hold x as fixed, so what do I get? Well, I will get, uh, I just repeat, I just write the sign again. Now I'm going to evaluate this. It's going to be integrate with respect to y holding x fixed. So it's uh, raised to the power of 3, x and it's y3. Okay, and it's 0, 1, okay, and it's dx. And then, uh, you know, you put in the numbers inside, you get integrate minus 3 to 2, okay, um, 0, so we can forget about that, put it inside, it's basically 1 third x, okay, and then integrate that with respect to x, and then the number that you get is uh, minus 5 over 6, okay. So, uh, easy example, uh, no surprise about that. Okay, um, another point to note is that if you notice that this is always, you know, it's either dy dx or dx dy, this you can in, kind of think of it as da. Okay, because it's a small elementary area. Okay, so integrate with the area. Right, so that's just a simple example on your partial integration because you should know what's going on. Now, next, move to a slightly more complicated one. Uh, if you can handle it, you should, you should be fine. Now, let's evaluate the volume of the solid below. So this time, what we have is that we have a graph. Okay, and we got a function of z equals to the function of x or y. Again, I say it doesn't change. Okay, but right now the information is all uh, imprinted inside the graph. So basically, we need to de define the limits of the area R. The area R is the area over here. Now I can quickly we got a point over here, but this is obviously zero zero. Okay, we got the axis of x and y. So remember, 
Um, we first write the double integral, okay? The double integral of the function, what is the function? The function is 4 take away x, take away y, all right? And then uh, with respect to the elementary area, uh, the a, r. Okay, remember, this is not iterated yet. Okay, it's not iterated yet. Okay, I mean, we, we need to translate to the iterated, iterated integral. And for that, we just pay careful attention of the limits, and then you know, it becomes an iterated integral. So what is the limit? Well, let's see. Okay, we got r over here. Okay, r, okay, we just follow the notation over there. r is equals to um, x and y. Okay, for x, the x-axis is here, so it's going to go from um, 0 to 1, right? Is that correct? And then y is going to go from, uh, okay, y is going to go from here to here, so it's 0 to 2. Okay, and that is all to it. So, with this, with the equation of the, the surface, and with the limits of r, okay, the, the area, we can just immediately write this to integrate. Uh, let's just do it in the reverse now. So I'm going to integrate with respect to um, x first, right? So the limits would be outside. The limits for y will be outside because if I want to integrate with respect to x first, well, it's going to be the integral inside. Okay, uh, don't worry, after a while you'll get what's going on. dx and dy. And basically, it's just a matter of evaluating this. And this is what we can call the iterated integral. Okay, and we can evaluate this immediately, and the answer would be uh, five. Okay, so basically, this lesson is just about you know double integral, you know, and okay. But right now, be very careful, okay, that our area R, okay, area R, is a rectangle. Okay, this. Why do I say this? Because this is very easy examples when area R is rectangle. Now, we're going to move on to the next, next lesson. It's, uh, it's going to be the next lesson or the next one after that. R would not be a simple rectangle. And that is where really the more um, interesting things crop up. And where the more, you know, geometrically analytical minds need to start working. Okay. okay and a last point to note. Um, if you were to notice, okay, this is basically a surface, right? Or it's actually a plane. At some point, as you know, as you go, keep on going along the, the, the x and y axis, this plane will somehow cut the x and y axis. Okay. I hope you can see that. Okay, and this is, let's just say, uh, z is equal to zero. Now, this is going to be very crucial, okay, because, you know, like I said, this is the, this result gives us the net sign volume. So, you know, once it cuts the x-axis, basically, we've got two volumes, and that one we need to be very careful. But it's okay, I'm um, going to come up next, just for those smart students who, you know, want to anticipate what's coming up uh, next, okay? And so, next one, we're going to move on to, I believe, area R, where it's non-rectangular regions. And let's see how we do the double integral for that. Thanks.